Welcome everybody to Law and Crime Daily. I'm Jesse Weber. An NBA icon was arrested and booked into jail in Washington State on Wednesday, accused of shooting at another man in a mall parking lot. The Tacoma Police Department says that Sean Kemp was booked into jail on a felony charge. Kemp was a first round pick in the NBA draft and played professional basketball for the Seattle Supersonics from 1989 to 1997. Sources close to Kemp say he had items stolen from his car on Tuesday and tracked his phone to the Tacoma Mall on Wednesday. When he approached the car where he thought his property might be, he says the man inside shot at him and he fired back in self-defense. Now this happened just before 2 p.m. local time near a tire shop outside the mall. Fortunately, no one was hurt. At last check, Kemp is being held without bond. Joining me now are my co-hosts, legal analyst, defense attorney Brian Buckmeyer, former trial attorney Terry Austin. It's good to see you both. Terry, so many open questions here. Do you think law enforcement made an arrest maybe too soon? What else should they have been looking into? I definitely think it was too soon. Look, Kemp waited for the police to come. He didn't try to flee. The other car did flee. And so you could say that he didn't have any culpability there because he wanted to report what happened. Also, I think the police should have been investigating those bullets. There must have been shell casings. It's difficult to determine who shot first, but if he actually was shooting back because someone shot at him, they should be looking at the phone and tracing all of that. There's no reason that they had to immediately arrest him, in my opinion, unless they had all of the evidence to show that perhaps he is guilty. I don't think it's all there yet. Well, I mean, probable cause. I mean, Brian, all this is over a, a tracking a stolen phone. Are there any defenses here? And by the way, any suggestions for people who find themselves in the similar situation? So Jesse, I'll, I'll answer in the reverse. First, I understand it's your property, you want to go and get it quickly, but freak things like this can happen where the person who steals your device or your other items, they have a weapon, they maybe confront you. I say that your items are not worth your life. Call law enforcement, give them the tracking number, let them go out there. In terms of defenses, right off the bat, I'm seeing self-defense. Someone shoots at you, you're allowed to shoot back at them. Guarantee maybe this uh, this weapon is properly licensed so he's not going to have that issue but i also see a defense of property it's not just him defending himself but him trying to recover items that were stolen of him the person shooting at him doesn't have right. necessarily a defense could work out in his favor just a really unfortunate situation to think about how it escalated into this well this is something you never see every day a mexican drug cartel is reportedly apologizing after some of its members kidnapped four americans and kill with killing two of them Four Americans drove from South Carolina to Mexico last week for one of them to get cosmetic surgery. This is according to Mexican officials. And during that trip, they found themselves in the midst of a deadly shootout. They were eventually kidnapped and thrown in the back of a pickup truck by heavily armed men. The deceased victims have been identified as Shahid Woodard and Zindel Brown. The surviving victims, Latavia McGee and Eric Williams, they've been returned to the United States. Mexican sources told the Associated Press that the cartel turned in some of its own men. That's right, five men were found bound with a letter of apology next to them, citing the suspect's lack of discipline and disobedience of cartel rules. All right. Well, we are in verdict watch for three men accused of killing rising rap star XXX Tentacion, whose real name is Jose Onfroy. The Florida jury began its deliberations on Wednesday afternoon. Onfroy was, gun Onfroy was gunned down during a robbery in 2018 while he was leaving a motorcycle dealership. Prosecutors believe defendants Michael Boatwright and Trayvon Newsom carried out the attack, while a third defendant, Diedrich Williams, drove the SUV that was used to facilitate the crime. There is a fourth co-defendant, Robert Allen, who pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and robbery charges in exchange for a possibly reduced sentence. In the first week of trial, Allen testified against his alleged co-conspirators, and during closing arguments, Michael Boatwright's attorney pointed out that the evidence tying his client to the crime came from a criminal. Only evidence, the only evidence that puts a gun in Michael's hand or has Michael participate in this murder at all is Robert Allen. You cannot base a conviction on what Robert Allen told you. Convicting an innocent person doesn't bring anybody justice. There's so much evidence besides Robert Allen that you can rely on that's credible, that's quality evidence that you can convict these three co-defendants for. I didn't rest my hat on Robert Allen. I didn't rest my case on Robert Allen. 
I know who Robert Allen is. Well, to end today's show, we're going to be talking about Tiger Woods, but off the golf course. You see, the famous athlete has been hit with a very expensive lawsuit by his ex-girlfriend, Erica Herman. Circuit court documents in Martin County, Florida, show an initial lawsuit was filed in October for a whopping $30 million. The couple had dated for six years, and they officially broke up last fall. Herman claims that an oral agreement was in place letting her stay at the golfer's home rent-free in exchange for, quote, valuable services. But Herman accuses Tiger's associates of convincing her to take a short vacation without Tiger so that they could then lock her out of the house for good. And the drama really doesn't stop there, no, because another legal filing from Herman involves a non-disclosure agreement that Tiger allegedly made her sign. On Monday, she filed a complaint to nullify it, citing the Federal Speak Out Act, and that prohibits NDAs if there's any evidence of sexual harassment or assault. She says that a private trust of Tiger's is trying to stop her from sharing any relationship-related details, but there hasn't been any indication so far that there were crimes of sexual nature. So Terry, can you break down these complaints for us? What exactly is Erica Herman claiming? You know, it's interesting. Both of these cases are civil cases and they're both in Florida State Court, but that's where the similarities stop right there. The first case that you mentioned is a case, they're suing the trust. They're not actually suing Tiger Woods himself. And they're suing the trust saying that that oral agreement was, I can stay in this house for an additional five years because of all of these services that I'm you know, performing. It didn't list exact services, so you have to wonder what's going on there. But the trust is claiming that it's just an argument between the two of them and there was no agreement and he just wanted her out of the house. He's there with his children, so that's understandable. Now the second case really has to do with this NDA and she wants to be able to talk about things. And I read the complaint and she is using the statute speak out and she is also saying there is no sexual harassment at this point in time. Maybe that'll come out later, but that statute is supposed to to be used to open up an NDA when there are sexual allegations. And we don't see that yet, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Brian, between the NDA case, the allegation he kicked his ex out of the home, if you were Tiger Woods, which one would you be more worried about? Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe none of these are actually of concern to him. I mean, Jesse, like Tiger Woods in the Masters in 2019 when he won, I don't think he's worried. Because <laughs> if you look at the one case, right, I've never heard, and I've lived in Virginia, Wisconsin, New York, Canada, I've never heard of an oral agreement to allow someone to stay. Those are flimsy. And oral agreements can be out the door just like it seems like she was when he decided to change the locks. That sounds like an angry ex-girlfriend. And then you have this sex act case on his face, it looks horrible. If there are sexual assault or harassment allegations, which we do not believe, or at least um, Herman's lawyer is saying they do not believe there are as of yet. So on both sides, I say wait for the information, but I don't see anything to worry about right now. Okay, so he's got to worry about winning the next major. That'll be his main concern. Ty, <laughs> Brian, Terry, good to see you both. We're going to see everyone next time as we discuss justice in America.